Okay, we're back. We're live. It's Thursday morning. I'm Jay Fardell. It's Think Tech, and more than that, it's Community Matters. And we are joined today uh, by Zoom uh, by uh, Derwin Leva. Derwin is an artist here in Honolulu. Good morning, Derwin. Hey, good morning. Glad yeah. to be here. Jay. You're my favorite artist, actually, here in Honolulu. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. So we wanted to find out how uh, COVID has affected you because it's affected everybody, it's certainly affected us. We've learned a lot here at ThinkTech. We've improved some systems. We've, we've extended our range to people all over the world. And that is, you know, to me, um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Um, anyway, so I wanted to know how it's affecting you. Uh, I know you spend your time in the studio and you create and you think and you have mm, these moments of creativity that result in the beautiful paintings you do. But tell us how your life has changed. Well, uh, the part that affected me the most is the exhibitions and the show, because now due to the problem that we're having, everything is being canceled. Um, I had a show in April in New York, um, and that was canceled, that was postponed to October, maybe, uh, to April next year. Um, then I had another exhibition in Milan, in Italy, and uh, that one got postponed. Uh, I had another exhibition in Rome, which also got postponed. So pretty much all the art shows uh, around the world uh, has been canceled or has been postponed for a latest day. Uh, so that's how mostly has affected me, um, which, you know, there is probably not gonna be any show this year. So that mm -hmm. will give me more time to work in the studio. And uh, definitely next year, I'm going to have a lot of painting to show. Oh, OK. Well, maybe it's not all bad. But what does it mean to you in terms of the development of your art, your reputation, your art sales, uh, to have all these exhibitions canceled or mm, delayed, possibly indefinitely? What does that mean to your career as an artist? Well, I mean, you know, I don't think that is, um, I always try to look at the positive things. Like right now, I'm not going to be doing the show, but like I said before, you know, it gives me more time to, to make more paintings. I spend more time in the studio now, so I'm definitely getting prepared for it. But I also have affected the way that I'm painting right now because uh, a lot of my work, I always include a lot of people. You know, well, that's one of the main subjects, music and people in my paintings. Uh, but then lady that I'm here at home and... I start working on things that I see around the house. So I start doing some still life and I start working on some uh, paintings. I do a lot of the, the, the cityscape, but then I don't put people in it because whenever I go out to the street, you know, I walk around the neighborhood, all I see is the houses. So everything is <laughs> empty, I don't see any people. So I start incorporating some of that into my paintings. A lot of the paintings that I'm doing now, they're just the cityscape, you know, and I put some musical instruments in there, but then that becomes the space for the viewer so they can jump into that cityscape and walk through because there is nobody there in the painting. It's just the cityscape. <laughs> As I, you know, and then uh, I started a new series of painting around my house. So like right now I started working a big canvas, the one that I have in my background. Uh, that one is five, by, uh, five feet by four feet. And uh, so I'm using elements of my house, different area of my house to, to do this, uh, uh, kind of like sequence of paintings that I'm, I'm going to be doing. And he's all like sitting in my house and then different areas. And all of them gonna have like a window, a balcony. Uh, we have view to a different part of the world because that's what I see every day. You know, even though that I'm inside my house, I still can see, you know, friends, uh, Italy, all these other part of the world that I want to visit or I wanna be there. So I, I'm, I'm gonna be putting this into my paintings. Uh, and then I'm going to be doing it from every area of my house. Ah, so your whole, your whole world has changed and, and you're, you're visual in the sense that you really need to have the visual stimulation of the people, the places, and so forth. And if you don't have them, well, you, you look right in front of your nose and you, and you look and see what your surroundings are. I find that very interesting. You don't do it by recollection. You do it by what is there now, today, right now. Right. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I try to incorporate a lot of things of the life, you know, like the daily life into my paintings. Uh, anything that happened to me, like, I always incorporate into the paintings. 
So I want to um, unpack on a couple of things before you go more. Uh, you talked you talked about um, interview people, yeah. Uh, you, when you it's not just looking at them; it's talking to them. Um, you want to you want to have a conversation with someone personal uh, and use and use that as a material for your for your creativity. Am I right? Yes. Yes, I do. So what, what um, is that? You, you need to be with the person. You need to um, sit in a chair opposite the person. You need to stand on the street corner and look at them and have a conversation. Is that what do you need to have an interview? Oh, I mean, not, I mean, I will not call it exactly. It's an interview, but like a lot of the, the, the times when I talk to people, and, uh, you know, I'm having a conversation and I get an impression from that person. Could be, you know, any specific um, thing about that person. You know, maybe the hair is something that caught my attention or, or you know, the way that a person talks. Things like that, uh, that I try to incorporate into the painting. So I get elements from that just from talking to people. Uh, a lot of the time, I just, uh, it's kind of like a respond to people conversation. When people come and tell me, oh, I see this in your painting, or uh, I like this idea. You know, and sometimes are things that I, I don't even think about it. You know, they see something completely different. So give me that feedback, then automatically I incorporate it in the next painting. I start putting into my paintings everything that they tell me that they, you know, I never saw before, and then I just start putting it into the paintings. So, <clears throat> so that's yeah. I, that's what I love talking. About. I'm involved with the people. What, what about Zoom? What about Zoom? What about having conversations on Zoom? I, I suspect you're not having that many conversations on Zoom, but do you spend time with Zoom? Well, I start doing uh, a class, kind of like a class, we, uh, not a class, but uh, getting together with a lot of other artists. And we do it every Wednesday. And we spend like about three hours together in the studio. So we can see everybody's work. We can talk about everybody's work. And then that way we kind of give each other feedback and everybody can see what the other artists are doing. Ah, and you get inspiration from that too, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely. That's another way for me to get feedback on my work. And, yeah. you know, they point things that, you know, they see different that I don't see. And then I, you know, I incorporate into my work or not. A footnote to that, Derwin, is that <clears throat> later on today we have Chamber Music Hawaii is going to come around. And uh, so what do you do with a chamber orchestra? What do you do with a, a, string, a string quartet? What do you do if they're not actually together? Well, you have everyone on his own Zoom and uh, they play together because they can all hear each other and they play together and it's really beautiful. And, and I, I would hesitate to say that it's almost as good as if they played in person. And so it's this collaboration among the members of the, uh, of the, of the chamber music group um, that, that that allow on Zoom that allows them to continue, you know, in their in their creativity. And so it's the same thing with you. You have a bunch of artists. They're all on Zoom. You learn from that. Um, you, uh, as a result, um, you have you have a process that may be different, maybe arguably even better uh, than. Um, let's see, I, I have to turn on the chat here because. Um, because there's a question and I need to get the question. Ah, okay. Yeah, I have a question for you. Okay. <clears throat> question for the, the host to ask, why isn't art categorized as essential business in crisis times? Oh, there's a very interesting question. I guess you're not characterized as essential. And what does that mean to you, Derwin? It's a good question. What does that mean to you um, you know, in terms, in terms of your that, business, that is, that is definitely a good question, and I didn't think about it until you mentioned it now. But uh, normally, we are used to, you know, the, the the public system, the schools. Whenever they have a problem with a budget or anything like that, usually the first thing that goes is the art department or things like that that they consider non essential. You know, music, art. Um, but I will argue that probably that's one of the most essential things for human life. You know, because people that don't have art, uh, don't have music, uh, you know, the, they are like the most saddest people in the world. You know, yeah. if you go back in history and you see like the Vikings, you know, a lot of the people don't study them because they didn't have art, you know, like other, you know, like a different, uh, like the Romans or some of the other cultures. 
because R is very important. And a lot of the times, the reason why we study different cultures is because they are, you know, it's not because of, of the essential business of selling fruits or anything like that is because of the art. Yeah. So what do they say? A great state deserves great art, a great community, a great society deserves great art. And it, it's, yeah. it's some, sometimes it's hard to, to put that in words, but there, there you go. And so, you know, the, the, the idea of not being able to get out uh, as you would, not being able to have the impressions and the uh, stimulations as you would, um, does that change your art now? Uh, being indoors all the time, does that change your art? Uh, is, it, is it the same? Is it better, worse? How do you compare it with the ordinary times? Well, definitely the, 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 the whole uh, thing with being inside the house have changed. Uh, I think I, have, I would say that I have opened my, you know, my view, the way that I see art now, because now I'm trying different things that I didn't try before, like, you know, like doing a still life. That's something that I was not attracted to. And now that I'm inside the house, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of the people and things like that. Uh, then I decided, well, I got to paint objects around the house. And uh, and when I see something, oh, okay, I like that. I'm going to put it into my painting. So I start getting more involved with the still life. And like I say, when I do the, the, the cityscapes, then I'm not putting any, any people in it because when I walk around my house and in the neighborhood, I don't see anybody. It's always empty. So that's what I'm putting. And that's what I'm doing, and that's how having influenced my art. You know, it strikes me that uh, when they write the books about you, Derwin, this will be your COVID period. It's, it's a new, <laughs> <laughs> it's a new period in the development of your art. You have new influences, uh, new orientation. No? You feel it? Yeah, and that that I think that will be my subject for next year. So uh, right now. Um, the next show that I have planned, which I don't know if it's going to happen, but I was invited to the Biennale in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, and that's going to be in October. So I don't know if that's going to still going to happen, but if it doesn't happen, then my next show will be in New York, uh, April next year. And I want my subject of all my painting. Well, uh, most of my painting is going to be this period where, uh, you know, we are inside the house where we cannot go out. Uh, so it's going to be about the quarantine and just uh, staying inside the house. Well, I know you're, you're a self-contained guy uh, from, you know, my experiences with you. Um, that I wonder if we could dig a little deeper and talk about your own state of mind here. Because everybody has had a change in the state of mind. Uh, you know, for example, you referred to your, I think you referred to your childhood a little while ago. Um, and I, you know, I have the same experience. I, my mind flies in the time of COVID and I think of, you know, things that happened to me years and years ago and that pop into my brain and kind of a recollection. And I wonder if you have uh, this kind of, um, uh, experience, uh, Bo uh, Baudelaire, Baudelaire, uh, and Proust, the French, the French authors and poets, you know, they talk about this, about how they revisit their their childhood and how they see things in, in a completely different and more expansive way while they're alone? Uh, I don't think the, the, you know, I don't think it has affected me in, in that way because um, I use everything around me as an inspiration. Uh, I, I, the COVID-19, I just see as a, another phase of my life. I don't see it as a, any problem or anything like that. I mean, I stay at home pretty much painting all the time. So that hasn't changed anything for me. It's just the subject matter, uh, which, you know, uh, I see a little uh, less thing that I used to see before. So now I'm kind of like transforming that into my paintings. But uh, uh, mentally to me, you know, this is just a phase of the life and, uh, I don't see it as anything different, you know, it's, it's, uh, and I guess because I come from a society where I've been through a lot uh, as a child that, you know, this is not, I don't see it as a big problem or anything like that. It's just another phase of life. Um, mm -hmm. And well, I'm just like, like everybody else. That, let's talk about your life as a child and so we can get some context on that. You say you've been through a lot. Uh, and I recall that you were originally from Cuba before you emigrated to Hawaii. Can you talk about your life there? 
Well, definitely. I mean, uh, the life in Cuba is completely different because, uh, I mean, it's a different society, uh, different culture. And as a kid, uh, you grew up with the essentials. I mean, um, the person that you you barely have like white TV. Only, uh, let's, um, you know, we, we I, weren't I'm getting good connection on that. Uh, we weren't getting good connection on that. Can you can you start to answer my question again about life in in Cuba as a child? Um, yeah, uh, life in Cuba definitely was completely different uh, because uh, you know it's a different society, it's a different culture. And being a communist country, I mean, uh, there is a lot of lack of uh, food and other things that we, you know, we are, we, we're used here in this country and we give, you know, for granted. So uh, just basic stuff, like a lot of the time we didn't have electricity or we didn't have water. Uh, and that was just became normal, you know, not having electricity and not having water in the house, that was normal. And not having food was normal. Uh, <laughs> opening the fridge and the only thing that you have in your fridge literally was water and ice. You know, that's the only thing that if you were hungry, you ate ice. And if you were thirsty, you drink water. You know, there was nothing else. <laughs> and, and that became normal. So a lot of the things when you grow up in a society like that, where, you know, you just live with a minimal uh, a lot of the times, then, uh, you know, coming here to the United States and see how wonderful these countries and everything they have to offer, then, you know, when you come into uh, other circumstances, you know, like what we're having now with the, with the COVID-19 and things like that. Yeah, well, it's a difficult time, but still you have a lot of other things that you wouldn't have if you would have been in another country, you know, because having the COVID-19 problem and you would be living like, in, you know, in another country where you don't have food, you don't have anything else, then that would be a lot worse. Uh, so it's yeah. a different perspective for seeing things. Well, you know, it is, a, but it is a social experience. And one of the elements is your contact with other artists. And actually, yes. we have another another question I want to pose to you that came in um, on, on the chat here. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, do, you know, do you have fellow artists that you compare notes with? And what, 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 who are they? Uh, what artists do you look up, uh, who look you up uh, by phone or by chat, uh, uh, Zoom? And, uh, you know, uh, what do you uh, admire them for any particular reason? And what, what is the context of your conversation about your respective art? Uh, well, when, I, when it comes to art that I study and things like that, I like a lot of the old stuff. I, I look at a lot of the old masters. But today's day, what I do, you know, to keep me motivated and to like keep talking to another artist, I go to the Honolulu Academy of Art, you know, on Wednesdays, uh, they have like a class for uh, like adult class over there. And then I just go over there to share with the other artists. There is another maybe 15, 20 people in the class. Uh, that way I go around, I can see everybody's work. I can talk to them about their work. And then they come and talk to me about my work. And that's kind of like a way for me to keep myself motivated and keep talking to another artist and uh, seeing different type of art. So I get idea from, you know, what they're doing, different uh, uh, subjects, completely different for, from what I do. Uh, and then that also gives me perspective to my work because I kind of like see and pick from everyone. You know, I like, I learn from, from everyone. A lot of the times I talk to these students, uh, which for them, they're kind of like, they think that there's, you know, they're studying and they got nothing to offer. You know, their paintings are, they think very simple, but when I look at those paintings, then I get ideas or stuff that uh, is different perspective from what I see in my paintings. And then I, you know, I, I learn from them and they don't realize that. But when I talk to them and I kind of uh, see their work, I, I kind of get a little bit from everybody. You know, it, it sounds a little bit like, like journalism, where journalists are always looking for a story. <laughs> Whatever they're doing, they're looking for a story. An element here and an element there, you know, looking for things that would interest other people. It sounds like the same thing that you're talking about. <clears throat> so, you know, the other thing I wanted to wanted to ask you about is, um, uh, you know, the, the the art world in general. Is it is it changing? Um, the art world in general. Do you think that people are having the same experience that you're having? The other artists, um, you know, for example. Um, I don't know if you watch television, but whatever media you get, 
Um, there's there's um, all kinds of emotional messages there, and they affect us all. Uh, I can, you know, personally, I can tell you they affect me, um, and I feel we're in a different world now. It's not just uh, another chapter in Derwin Leva's art. It's everything. Everything is different. And the sooner I feel that we recognize that, the better off we'll be in terms of dealing with the reality. Okay, so how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the world and, and your feelings about the world, aside from the, the, the physical objects, the artistic, the light, the shapes, the form that you see and that you incorporate in your paintings? What about these times of COVID? What about the masks and, 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 the, and the illnesses and the death and the hospital scenes that we see almost every day in the media? Um, do you, you incorporate the mood of that the emotional power of that is that is that happening to you too yeah you know definitely that's something that have changed the world and i think this is something that is going to change forever the world you know this is one of those events that changed history kind of like 9 11 changed history in the united states um, and we start doing things differently uh, after that uh, then i think this is one of those uh, events in history that is going to change life for everyone uh, we will have to adapt uh, we, you know and I see all the people that are getting sick and everything like that. So definitely the way that we do social life is going to change. Uh, the way that we interact with each other is going to change. And that's not something that's going to go away in a month or two. That's something that is going to take some time before people can adjust to that. Uh, so, and that's affecting the whole world. I mean, that's not something that affects only one person. That's something that is affecting the whole world. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I think that, Eventually, we will come out of this, you know, like uh, the world has uh, overcome some other uh, problems that we have in the past. Uh, I mean, different plagues and things like that that we experienced many years ago. And, you know, we overcame that. So now uh, I think we will overcome. But I know it's a hard situation for a lot of people. And I know that is, you know, it, it's very difficult. Yeah. Well, do you think that the, the objects uh, reflecting this period, uh, of all the, you know, the pain and, uh, and the trouble of it, will find their way uh, into your your painting. Will will I see uh, will I see face masks in your painting? Yes, Robin? yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. That's a, you know, and that that's one of the uh, this series of painting that I'm doing inside my house. Um, I was kind of like brainstorming like all the different places. Okay, I will do here one, one in the living room, one in the night room. And then I was thinking, okay, I will do one in the porch. But then I was thinking, well, if I go out to the porch, then I have to use a mask. So, you know, <laughs> I do the painting with the lady sitting on the porch with a mask on it. Or, you know, like every time that I do any painting with the, 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 the person outside, then it will have to have a mask on it. And that, that will just represent the, this period that we are in it right now, definitely. <laughs> That's the role of the artist is to trans translate the reality in some special way to interpret the reality for the rest of us. And the reality is changing and therefore your, you know, your view of the world and your painting, your expression must be changing as well. Uh, so how do you see the future for yourself, Derwin? Um, you know, I know it's hard to say, it's certainly hard to say what's going to happen and that variable is beyond our control really. Um, but um, how do you see the future? Uh, evolving in your art and in your life? Well, I think for my art, um, you know, all these, uh, the cancellation of all the shows and things like that, um, you know, I don't know if it's like kind of like a step back, um, but I think eventually all those shows going to happen. So I, I will have to catch up, you know, this, uh, this year is going to be a slow, but I think next year probably is going to be a very like fast paced year for me as an artist. Uh, and that's, that's what I see, you know, if everything, uh, if we overcome this problem that we're having now, and we in some way go back to what we used to have as a normal life, you know, um, definitely we're going to have some restriction, but if we overcome that, I think next year is going to be a year where, uh, I'm going to have a lot of shows and a lot of opportunities uh, that I'm not going to have this year. This year, you know, um, I guess yeah. it's going to be kind of like the stock market, you know, sometimes up, sometimes down. And this is a year that is going to be down for me or for, you know, not for me 
only bad for any artist because I don't think that anybody's doing any show, any exhibition, anything like that. So this is affecting a lot of people, you know? And well, next know, year it, will be a good year. It's so, yeah, it's sort of like uh, the economy in general. And I suppose uh, as the economy does better, more people are out there buying art, which is ultimately important to you because that's what you do. Um, and I, I would imagine that while the economy is down and out the way it is now, nobody's buying art. Am I right? Or are people knocking on your door these days, Derwin? Well, no, you know, a lot of the shows that I do kind of that's the venue for me to sell my work. And by not having that, then I will have to shift to online selling. So now actually I'm working with a company from New York. Uh, we're setting a new platform to uh, start selling my work through them uh, on the internet. Uh, so I, that's kind of like a work in progress. I'm going to have it set up maybe for next month. Um, and then we'll see how that works. So I'm uh, going to be shifting from going exhibitions into going online. I start selling online. Well, while we've been, uh, you know, while we've been talking, um, our engineer has been showing pictures of your art because we have a, we have a collection of the pictures of your art, you know, Derwin. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, and I'm, I noticed uh, while I'm watching that the, you know, you're a very Latin, uh, high, high vitality, uh, high color um, style, you know, always includes musical instruments. And so um, always, well, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time, uh, can you say, why are there musical instruments in your art and are you continuing to include them? Um, and and uh, do you think you will continue to include them? I do always use them because to me, music is very important. I mean, I think it's mus music is important to everyone. Um, everybody listens to different type of music, but when we do listen to music, make us happy. And that's what I want to represent in my paintings. You know, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the subject in my work is, I always want to have that element of happiness in my painting. And that's what I put the, the musical instrument. In my case, I, I use uh, musical instruments that are uh, typical from Cuba or, you know, a lot of the times, but it's just a representation of the music because I know uh, no matter what kind of music you listen, either if it's uh, classic music or rock or any other type of music between that stream, um, then, you, you listen to it because it make you happy, make you feel, you know, uh, different. And because I think it's important to everyone to have that, I always input, put it into my paintings. And yes, I will continue to put it into all my paintings. Uh, I always try to find a way to put it in there, even if it's just, you know, like a, like a small representation of it. Um, but uh, definitely. Oh, that's wonderful. Make people happy. What a great thing in life. Uh, and it is uplifting. Um, and I'm so glad we had this conversation and I'm so glad we connected and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to, to learn more about you as I have in, in this half hour. So Derwin, where, where can I look more for your art? Do you have a website or a place where I can take a look? Yes, definitely. I have my website, which is uh, my name, derwinleva.com. Uh, and then also uh, a lot of my, uh, the things that I do daily, I post it in my Instagram which is uh, Derwin underscore Leva. And uh, that's normally what I pull uh, the most updated work. And that's where people can see my work or contact me a lot of the times. Uh, I get a lot of contact uh, through the internet. Yeah, Derwin, it's always so refreshing to talk to you. I'm so glad we connected today. And I want to do it again uh, soon. I wish you all the best. I wish you well in every, and stay well, will you please? Thank you, Derwin Laban. Thank you for uh, coming. Thank down. you, Gabe, for inviting me. And always a pleasure being in the show. Aloha.